Hello, my name is Miloš Hoffman. It's my pleasure today to present you ST solutions for automation digital inputs. I will put the main focus at the newest product called CLTO3-2Q3, enabling to build up self-powered digital input applications. At the beginning, just few words about my role in the company. I work in a technical marketing department and I'm in charge of smart power products for factory automation market, concentrating a lot on interfaces for digital inputs and drivers for digital outputs. Let's take a look at the key points we are going to cover in the presentation. First, we will list the key applications we address with the CLT03 interface. Afterwards, we will take a look at the function, I mean purpose of digital inputs, and also its characteristics. I will show you the key advantages of an integrated solution versus a simple discrete implementation. And uh, after an overview of ST portfolio of digital input products, I will introduce the CLTO3 component and its key features. Let me start with the first topic, the key applications. Today's smart factories are complex, but very well structured environments with several layers starting from the shop floor with sensors and actuators at the bottom. We talk, for instance, about temperature, pressure or flow sensors, light curtains or various buttons on the one hand, and contactors, motors, or light indicators on the other hand. These components are usually interfaced by programmable logic controllers, called PLCs, installed either centralized in a control cabinets or distributed IOS systems across the plant. PLCs communicate with the top floor and plant management systems, typically through an industrial Ethernet-based networks like EtherCAT, Profinet or Ethernet IP. Today we talk about interfaces for digital inputs, which we can find at distributed I.O. systems or programmable logic controllers and their periphery modules, but also at motor drives. Despite their primary purpose for factory automation, these products perfectly fit plenty of other applications like textile machines, or building automation, or agricultural or marine systems. Let's review what is the main function and what are the characteristics of digital input. The key purpose of the digital input interface is to convert binary signals coming from the process side on the left to the logic level signals on the right side. Typically, a signal with two levels and a nominal magnitude of 24 volt DC comes to the PLC digital input periphery, where it is evaluated and translated to the 3.3 volt, eventually to 5 volt logic levels, and then further processed by MCU or some other application specific circuits. To ensure compatibility between external signal sources like industrial sensors, and the input interface, several characteristic types have been specified in the IEC 61131-2 standard. As mentioned already, the IEC 61131-2 is the key reference for input characteristics specification. There are three different digital input types specified in that norm. We talk about type 1, 2, and 3. The IEC standard specifies three operating regions for each of the characteristic type. They are marked as off region, transition region, and on region. The voltage and current limits for that region boundaries differ from one characteristic type to the other, while their shapes are remaining the same. Each characteristic type is suitable for different kind of switching devices. For instance, type 1 has been defined to suit ideally to electromechanical switching uh, devices like relays, 
push buttons or switches. It may not fit to two wire solid state sensors because its transition region starts at quite low current, already at half milliamp, and the on region requires quite high voltage, it means at least 15 volt. Now you can clearly see the difference. Type 2 shifts the current threshold for all the regions to higher levels. Transition region starts at 2 mA and on region even at 6 mA, while decreasing the voltage threshold for the on region down to 11 V. All of this permit higher leakage current for the external switching device in the off state and higher voltage drop across the switching device in the on state to ensure its proper supply. That's why this type perfectly fits two wire proximity switches. The last but not least, type 3 is a kind of good compromise between the other two. It is quite universal. It supports electromechanical switching elements as well as modern two wire sensors with a limited power consumption. We have several options how to build up digital input interface. Integrated solution can be definitely much smaller than the discrete one, but besides this, it offers also other interesting advantages. The simplest passive solution can be realized by a resistor divider with an RC filter. The input volt ampere characteristics of that connection is linear. It means the input current rises proportionally to the applied input voltage. This results in high power dissipation at high input voltages. It means in the on state. Our integrated solution based on a CLT products, which stands for current limited termination, brings several advantages. First of all, the input volt ampere characteristic is no more linear but the current is limited across the whole voltage range to a minimum value just to ensure the compliance with the IEC standard. That's why the power dissipation is significantly reduced. We implement also various protection functions in the integrated products for improved performance and high EMC immunity. I would like to show you on a practical example how much we can improve the efficiency and reduce power dissipation with our integrated input. Let's consider the most common type 3 input characteristic and the corresponding regions definition displayed here. We can draw in the chart the linear characteristic of a passive solution with impedance in range of 5 kilo ohm. Let's add also an input volt ampere characteristic of one of our integrated input. In this case, the input current is very effectively limited, especially at high input voltages. So when we compare the power dissipation at the nominal voltage operating point, we can see an excessive reduction in range of 50% in comparison with the simple discrete solution. And this is definitely a very interesting result. Let's take a look at the ST product portfolio of integrated digital inputs. We have several products on the market with different feature sets. We have started with CLT3 with four channels compatible to type 1 and 3 characteristic with embedded search protection and output interface capable to drive optocoupler LED. Afterwards, we have introduced PCLT device with two channels, programmable characteristic for all three input types, and output interface compatible to both optocoupler as well as CMOS logic with levels between 3 and 5 volts. Then two other chips with eight channels and SPI interface came on the market. I talk about the SCLT3 and CLT01 parts. They differ from each other just by speed. 
the SCLT3 has embedded digital filter, while CLT01 is optimized for high data rates. Most recent I see is the CLT03 2Q3 with two channels, output interface compatible to optocoupler as well as CMOS logic, process pins rated at 60 volt, and several other advanced features. From now on, we will concentrate on the newest digital input IC, the CLT03 2Q3. We can see the key functions of the chip on the block diagram in the middle. We display just one channel as both are identical. Voltage regulator takes care about supply of the internal circuits and uses only the energy coming from the input side, so it means the chip doesn't require any additional supply which would be present all the time. The process side pins are high voltage tolerant up to 60 volt which has a positive influence on system reliability. Thanks to the dual input structure with embedded rectification block, it is possible to interface high side, low side, as well as AC signals. The input characteristic is matching type one and three requirements. Output stage can interface either an optocoupler or 3.3 volt CMOS logic circuit. There is also a configurable test pulse generator for improved system safety. The part comes in a tiny DFN package with an outline 2 by 4 millimeters. Both channels are completely independent and isolated from each other, permitting residual voltages up to 230 volts. These features make the IC very flexible and perfectly fitting in safe applications, among the others, of course. This is the typical application diagram. It is showing connection of high side or low side sensors. There is also optional transil diode for surge protection if it is required. And a very few external capacitors. The output drives optocoupler in this case but it enables also to multiply the amount of optocouplers or even to make a combination with a status LED. The 60 volt tolerance improves reliability and simplifies to achieve safety integrity level certification. When the voltage at the input exceeds operating conditions above 30 volt approximately, the input current is limited to even much smaller values. This is a smart way for further reduction of power dissipation at the overvoltage conditions. The symmetric input characteristics brings several advantages and prevents failures caused by wrong wiring installation in the field. For better idea about power dissipation savings, the following measurement has been done. The input voltage was smoothly increased from zero up to 60 volt and power dissipation in the channel evaluated. The test pulse generator has been disabled to approach the worst case conditions. As visible on the right side waveform, the power dissipation drops down significantly when the IC activates the reduced current limitation in the fault region. This happens typically around 40 volt. There is a current generator at the output stage providing currents between 2 and 4 milliamps. Additional integrated clamping circuit limits the output voltage up to 3.6 volt. Thanks to this structure, the IC is able to drive optocoupler or standard 3.3 volt logic without any additional external components. Multiple optocouplers or a combination of optocoupler with indication LED in series connection is also supported. A test pulse generator has been embedded in order to enable a cyclic hardware connection test to the MCU. The test pulses are generated with an adjustable timing and the period can range from 1.2 up to 62 milliseconds. 
the setting is done through an external capacitor at the TP pin. If the test pulses are not required, this feature can be of course deactivated by shorting the TP pin to ground. Let's summarize the key advantages brought by the new CLT-03IC. It enhances the flexibility as it doesn't require any external supply. It widens compatibility on the process side, supporting high side as well as low side sensors, but also on the output interface, enabling to drive optocoupler or a CMOS logic. It ensures high safety and reliability thanks to the 60 volt tolerance, embedded test pulse generator, and complete separation of channels. Last but not least, it reduces space on the PCB as it comes in a really tiny DFN package. Let me list down the documentation and eval boards for our CLT products, including the ST Eval IFP 035V1 at the very last row, related to the CLT 03-2Q3 chip. I hope you have received some useful information. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to talking to you soon again. Goodbye.